Well, welcome once again to the seven steps of the scientific method and your fifth grade science fair project. Today, we're going to be talking about your display board. Hopefully up to this point, you've ex finished your experiment, you had a good time doing it, you worked with maybe a family member or parent or someone like that, and you put together, you got your results, you collected your data, you're ready to now display it, bring that into the school, into the science fair, and display it in something like this. Um, so, when we display our project, the first thing we need to do is we need to get a board. Now, you can see on here, this is a tri-fold board. You can get these at usually Target, Office Depot, Office Max, something like that. Uh, you can go ahead and purchase one of those. I do have some boards. They don't exactly look like this one, but you won't get docked down if you use the boards that I have, but I do have some that you could possibly borrow or use. Okay, so we're going to walk through this display board and talk about how we need to set it up so it looks good. Um, and it's attractive for people who want to come and learn about what you did. The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a project title. So if you look right there, we have a project title. And it's very simple. Uh, it could be from your design diagram. At, on your design diagram at the very top, it said the effects of blank on blank. Uh, you could put that title, whatever you did in there. You could come up with a uh, catchy title of your own if you wanted to. Some people have done some in the past on their own. That's up to you as to how you want to do it. Um, one thing I do want to caution you is do not just write directly on the board. Um, unless you've got really nice penmanship or you can um, use markers or something to write nice, don't do this in pencil, things like that. If you want to do it in pencil first and go over it in marker, that's okay. But we want this to be attractive. Have some coloring. In it. Um, add color to different things. Make the words pop out, whether it's cutting them out of paper or drawing them using markers, crayons, things like that. But make them look nice. Make this project look um, attractive so when people are walking by, they want to come and look at it. Okay, the second thing, so we've got our project title. The second thing we're going to look at is our problem. So you came up with a problem or question, you could put question here as well, that doesn't really matter. Either one of those two would be fine. And you can see, you can't really read it here, but underneath there you would write what your question or problem was. Again, making it nice and neat, you can see they have it bordered um, in here. Yeah, it is in black and white in here, but hopefully yours will be in color. Okay, the second step is that we did a background and we did some research. Um, that doesn't necessarily have to be in your project. If you want to put that in, you sure can. Um, but let us know maybe where you went, where you did your background, what kind of research you did. But then the next thing is to find our hypothesis. And if you look at the hypothesis, that's your educated guess. Again, you could go back to your design diagram. If this happens, then this happens. And going back to John and his experiment, if I increase the amount of sugar, then the bread should rise higher or bigger. Um, so again, you're going to come up with your hypothesis. You can see that they put that in there. Um, you can't read it, but again, it's, it's in there and in an orderly um, fashion. After you do your hypothesis, remember, then it's time to do the experiment. So we're just going to slide down here. And in this area, what you're going to do is you're going to talk about what you did. Here is where you could refer to your procedures. You might want to put in here the constants that you used, the materials that you used, your control group that you used, all of the things that are going to make your experiment work. I should be able to cut this piece out of your display board, take it home, and do an experiment, this exact experiment, and hopefully get the same results. So that's what you're going to do in there. Describe what your experiment was. What did it take to do your experiment? What do we all need to do your experiment? Okay, then in the middle, if we slide right over here, is the data. So after we did our experiment, we collected our and analyzed our data. And if you look here, they've got a couple different graphs. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to do it this way. Um, you might just have one graph. You might just have pictures. So a good thing to do is take pictures while you're doing your experiment and to bring those in. And we talked a little bit about that in class as to that's something that you should be doing is taking pictures so we can see how your experiment, how it worked with you. So here's where you might have something like a bar graph. You might have something like a line graph. 
And down here is where they kind of took the pictures and pasted the pictures on there of what it looked like from day to day. So you can do a multiple things like this. Um, I would have at least some type of graph and some type of pictures in there of what you did to help explain your experiment. Then we're going to slide up here to the right side of our board to the results. And your results are what happened? Did you prove your, or which was the best, which was the second best, third, fourth, whatever it was? What does your data show us? That's what's going to go in here. Okay, and that then leads to your conclusion which your conclusion is, did you prove your hypothesis correct or incorrect? And that's basically what you say. I, my hypothesis was proven correct, so and so was the best. Or my hypothesis was proven incorrect, this was the correct or the best one. Okay. Then we do believe a little space down in here. And we talked about this in our, in our last video about next time. Is there something you could improve on? Could you make your experiment better? Um, was the data not separated enough so we might have to change how our experiment went to get the results like John had to do. He didn't have, there wasn't a significant amount between 50 and 100, so he redid his experiment. So that's kind of the next time. Then if you look down in front of the display, down in here, we've got a model. If you want to bring in your information and the things that you used, if that's something that's appropriate to bring in. Obviously, if you do something like moldy bread or something that's growing and it's not growing anymore, that's going to be hard to bring in. But if you do have things, some kids have built things before, bridges, things like that, uh, you want to bring those in, that would be fantastic so we can see them. The next thing you're going to see is they've got one, they've got two, three journal type things. Again, we've talked about this before. These are things that you don't have to do for our fifth grade. We're looking more for when we were in our experiment over here, whether you were going to have your procedures list and your materials list there, or you could put them in something like this journal over here and you could put your materials and your procedures list in something like that. That would work as well and have that there. I wouldn't label it journal. I would label it materials and procedures list. Okay? So that's kind of what your board should look like. Uh, that's when you come in for your science fair project, something like that. It will be sitting on a table very similar to this. So hopefully you can get that taken care of. Don't wait till the last night to do it. Spend some time, make it look nice and neat so people want to come and see your project. So I hope you've enjoyed your science fair project. I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned something. Um, and I hope you're able to come in and present this to myself, judges, and parents and uh, students that want to learn about it.